Ryan Gill here from Gill's Primitive Archery and today I'm going to show you how I put the recurves in my recurve bows. Now when I say recurves I don't necessarily mean the big 90 degree, degree sweeping recurves uh, that I've done some in the past. There's not a great calling for those but in recurves in general some people call them flip tips which is what I usually call them. Just any sort of recurving of the limb the opposite way the bow is bending. And this adds a little performance to the bow and also makes it a little smoother drawing and also gives it a really nice look. So a lot of customers like to have a recurve in their, in their limbs and uh, almost every single one of the bows I build has a recurve or a flip tip to some degree. And the process in which I do it is, is all the same. And I use steam and the reason that I use steam um, is mainly because I can set this up and I can walk away. Now, let's go ahead and rewind just a second and talk about some of the, the uh, methods that other people use. A lot of other folks like to use dry heat. And, and somebody a long time ago came up with this idea that, that you use wet heat for wet wood and dry heat for dry wood. And, I mean, it sounds great in theory, but it really doesn't make a difference. Um, I mean, if you use dry heat on wet wood, you're, you might be liable to crack it. But quite, quite honestly... I have no interest in heating green wood anyway. That makes no sense to me. Um, so I'm working with a season, season stave. I roughed this out this morning. I got it floor tillered. And right now, you know, you can see I've got tin foil over top of the pot of boiling water. And we're letting it roll. And basically, once you see that steam start coming out the side, I let that go for about 20, 25 minutes. If you do it like crazy long, like an hour, hour and a half, then you might start seeing to where it is actually damaging the wood, creating some cracks, but usually 20 to 30, even 45 minutes on some of it's not that big of a deal. If you do start seeing the, the drying checks on the back afterwards, usually it's not because of the steam, it's because there was actually moisture still in the wood. Um, steam is evaporating water, it's very hot, it's not actually introducing moisture to the wood it's sucking moisture out at a rapid rate. Um, we might get a little bit of surface moisture right here along the edge, but that, I mean, that's hot. <laughs> you see me just yank away from it. Um, that's not in introducing moisture deep into the wood. Okay, so, and but then going back to it, the reason I use steam is because I do this for a living. So if I rough a, a bow out in the morning, chase a ring, rough it out, then a lot of times by lunchtime, I can come in here and bend these recurves or flip tips or whatever you want to call them. And if I have to sit and babysit it with a heat gun or over the burner of the stove, I'm just continually wasting time. I can set this up, I can make myself lunch and eat, and this thing can run by itself for 20-25 minutes, no big deal. By the time I'm done eating, I can grab this thing and go and bend it. So that's, one of, that's the main reason that I like to use steam. Now the folks that like to use dry heat, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, dry heat works great um, but one of the things that I really like about the steam is it's heating everything that's underneath this, and this stave goes all the way to this end. Um, it's heating it all pretty much the same temperature at the same rate at the same time. So when I pull this out, that whole thing is even all the way through. Where if you're using a heat gun, it may take practice in order to get that limb heated up to where it's, you don't have hot spots in that limb or specifically drying out one spot, maybe even uh, over toasting it a little bit. And then when you go to bend it, it, it starts to lift the splinter on the belly side. Those are some things that people do run into problems with, especially with dry heat, is you can pop a splinter on the belly, especially if you rush it. If you go super slow and you're paying really good attention, you can do some awesome bends with dry heat. But like I said, this does the work for me. I can set this up, I can walk away, and I can come back when this is done in 20-25 minutes and I can go ahead and bend it and be done. So that's the reason I use steam. Steam does not hurt dry wood. I promise you I have built over 250 bows and I use steam for all of my corrections with with 99% of them problem free. And like I said, if it does have a problem and get a couple drying checks, it's because that wood wasn't dry all the way. Now, with that in mind, if you're interested in this and some other things, here is the book that I wrote on building bows and it is called building the snakey osage but it does cover everything you need to know especially of building osage bows but basically any bows and it's literally 150 color pages of everything you need to know regarding building bows 
So if you're interested in that, you can check that out on my site, www.gillsprimitivearchery.com. So this thing is almost going to be ready to go. What we're going to do is go set the camera up, and because uh, this is a fast process. When I pull this off the heat, I kill the stove, pull the stave off the, steep, sorry, off the heat, I run over and I bend it right away. It's not, so, it's not progressive. It doesn't go slow. You want to bend that wood when it's as hot as possible. So we're going to go ahead and we're set the camera up and uh, I'll meet you over there when we're ready to bend it. It's a fast process and that's pretty much it. So now what I've got here, I can explain this while I'm holding it to you a little, um, here a little bit, is I have this form made and it's basically just a radius cut into here and this is an 8 inch piece, this side's a 10 and then I also have a 6 and of course the, the 8 is just average, something that I, I normally work with. 10 is if I'm working with an extra extra long bow or I'm trying to make specifically big sweeping recurves. Um, and then a 6 is if I'm using some very a very, very short bow. But that stuff's not really important, the size of it. It's, it's mostly what appeals to you most. And uh, when I'm doing a full recurve, I will cram it right down in the bottom and then I bend it all the way over and I'll clamp it down. Um, and I don't have a separate form for my recurves first, you know, my flip tips like this one. Uh, what I do is I simply just don't put it in all the way. And then I can kind of eyeball it, you know, I've done enough of these. I mean, you could build one that's just for your flip tips, but, uh, you know, I've done enough of these that I pretty much just eyeball everything. And uh, so I stick it in there and bend it pretty much all at once. Like I said, you just yank it from the stove as quick as you can, stick it in here, hold it. When it's cool, it's ready to go. So I got a, uh, a nice like, kitchen island type thing that I built back here, and it just happens to slide right under there perfect. So I can uh, bend it, and then I stand back and look at it, make sure it's the bend that I want, and uh, then we'll go ahead and let it cool. And then we uh, steam the other side. You know, this is done in about, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it's cool to the touch, and it's fine, you can take it out of here. So, you know, in about an hour after you stick it in here, you can go out and tiller that bow. Like I said, it doesn't introduce moisture to the inside of the wood. It raises the grain, puts a little moisture on the outside, but, you know, if these limbs are as thick as, you know, they need to be, like right in here, it's not gonna pull these out because of the moisture, I promise you, I do this, you know, quite often. So, uh, give this a try. Like I said, it's kind of maintenance free. It heats it all up the same temperature for you and uh, see if it doesn't work out good for you. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel too because, uh, you know, we like to put out lots of how-to videos and hunting videos and stuff like that. So uh, if this kind of stuff appeals to you, make sure you follow along and uh, like Gill's Primitive Archery on Facebook and Instagram as well.